The slave trade was a 400 long dark history of West Africa, which involved three continents and millions of young Africans. It is arguable about how the transatlantic slave trade started exactly, but slavery had always been in existence in one form or the other in most cultures of the world, including Africa, but it was not for economic gains until the prospect opened up when Europeans began taking Africans to slavery to work on the plantations in the Americas. On today's episode, we'll be taking a look on Seriki Williams Abbas, who was born in Fari Milakum Fagbemi, a renowned slave merchant during the 19th century, who became the paramount ruler of Badagri within the indirectory structure established by the British. Abbas was captured as a slave and sold to a certain Brazilian slave dealer, who was called Williams, who took Abbas to Brazil as a domestic servant and taught him how to read and write in Dutch, English, Spanish and Portuguese languages. He returned to Nigeria on the condition of working with Mr. Williams as a slave trade business partner. In collaboration with his European partners, he built and maintained a 40-room barracoon, small rooms in which captured slaves were held prior to being sold to European slave merchants and shipped away across the Atlantic on the Lagoon Shore in Badagri. Part of the things in the Syracuse Museum are a preserved umbrella and gin, which were exchanged for slaves and other slave relics. The compound also has the court which the Syracuse used to pass judgment when it was made the paramount ruler of Badagri. A descendant of the Syracuse took us on a walk along the point of no return, a particular path in which slaves were marched on to ships that were ready to sail back. Where the slaves normally take off from when they are going to the point. So once they cross, they cross just like we did, but with a paddle boat. So once the masters cross them with the paddle boat, the chains, the adult chains on their neck and the ones on their hand and their feet will be ready here. So once they get to this part, the white masters will tie them. And since the chain is on a single file, the slave will be on a single file. From here, they will pull down to the point of no return. The only stopover they usually have is the attenuation well which the water they give to them and they lose their memory. So the island you are is called Berefu and Berefu means isolated. Presently today is being occupied by the indigenous of Badagri, which they stay at this part, while the foreigners in Benenua and the other country, from other parts of the countries or the world stay at this part. Got more slaves on Nigeria, that's why we called slave coast then. Ghana, they got iron gold, yeah, it was gold. called good yeah. coast. Ivory coast, could have, yeah. they were called ivory because of the elephants and they got more ivory. And the green coast, Sierra Leone, other like four countries were together there, that they got green for. That's why they are called green coast. So it was Nigeria. Out of ten slaves that have been transported, six will be Nigeria or Bene. So Nigeria and Bene was the slave coast. Because 60% of the slaves that were transported then were from Nigeria or Benefobi. That's why we are called the slave coast then. And then the rest were split between the other African countries. So we were the ones that were majorly sold into slavery. That's why we have more of Nigeria culture in Brazil. Because mm -hmm. most of our people are there. They're still doing all this culture. If you get to Brazil, you see most of our culture is there. And I heard the street in Brazil where they speak Yoruba. So mostly Yoruba. Brazil will worship or show? Yeah, they do Zango too. Right, but they call it Zango. Zango. <laughs> yes. Le Manja, they call it Le Manja. And in return, we also, some of the African people, um, the black that we turn, also brought their 
their own culture, their designs to the interior. Like Shita Mosque in Lagos Island, another mosque which has the Brazilian designs were from Brazil, from the slaves that returned from there. So, this is the original spot attenuation well. This is where it has been since the slavery was going on in Badagri. Once they take the slaves from here. So once the slaves are coming from the jet, it usually will be in a very hot sun. So they will be tasty. And even if it's not in the sun, the master don't feed the slave well. They don't give them much water much. They feed them once a day and they drink water once a day. And when they are feeding them the water, it's not all the slaves that get. But when they get to this place, they fetch it for them abundantly and for them to drink. So once the slaves take the water, they will lose their memory. The reason they did was because the white masters, they were not men, they were just like 40 to 50. Let's imagine is 50. And the slaves were taken, the minimum is 1,600. And they exceed, depending on the ship, the uh, capacity of the ship. So once the slaves, master, get, when they are going, the slave has the opportunity of killing them and taking the boat, escape to any nearby island or settling, up any, settling down anywhere. The white master didn't want that to happen, so they met with the African chief that this is what is going on. So with the help of the African chief, they put black magic in this well. So whenever the slaves get to this part and they fetch the water from them, immediately they will lose their memory. But it's not permanent, just temporary for them to be so for them to succumb when they are going to the on their ship when they are on the ship. So the slave won't be able to revolt, they won't have strength, they will just be like dummies. They will not be able to do anything. They will only do what the masters want them to do. That's the story about the water. But since slavery ascended, nobody has tested the water or touched it because the <laughs> villagers they believe it might still be effective. That's why the water is left and rejected. That's why it's like this. So this is a slave point of no return. Then this is where they used to cross the slave from. Once the slaves get to this place, that is bye bye to Africa. They are no longer coming back. And then there used to be two acts, just like these two standing poles. And there was something around at the top. It was called Ark of Departure then. So once the slave gets to this part, they will release this chain. Since they are drawn from the um, attenuation well and they don't remember anything, the master will lead them here. Then once they pass through the Ark of Departure, they will separate them, the male different, the female, and then the children. And the ship that was taking them closer, that was taking them away, can't come closer to shore. It has to be inside. And so they use paddle boats to lead the slave from the jet, from the ancient head, from the shore here to the inner ship that was taking them. And the ship is called slave cargo ship. It has three decks. The upper deck is for the masters. The middle deck is for the female slaves and their children. Right in lower deck is for the male slaves. So depending on the size of the, sh of the ship, the slave might be on a single fry. They might be lying down or they might be sitting, depending on the ship that was taking them away and the capacity that they can take. So if they don't get the number of slaves they want here in Badaivri, they will sail to other countries like Benin Republic, Ghana and Ivory Coast to get other slaves. So once they get the number of slaves they want, they will sail off. And once they are going, maybe because the ship, the ship they were using was a the bridge that country it was a bridge to the flag was bigger and the cargo ship was not engine it was the bridge that controlled it so the masters they usually use the slave as sacrifice when the ship they have been attacked by sharks because they believe the shark might capsize the boat so for that not to happen they throw much slaves into the water to distract the sharks the sharks from following or attacking the ship and mostly they have other items. Maybe when the ship needs to be weighted, they need to reduce the weight on the ship. Instead of them to throw those items like cannon guns that are very heavy and other items they bought for exchange, they believe that they will, with those items they will get more slaves. So they prefer to throw the slaves into the water to reduce the weight of the ship. And sometimes when they sick, any sick that is sick, any sh um, slave that gets sick, automatically be thrown into the water wow. because they believe they were if. If they allow or they keep the slave, the sickness may spread and affect the other. So they don't want that to happen. They throw the slave. So once the slave gets here, that is bye bye to Africa. The miles they want and they cross through the port. Um, take each of them to their destination, their various destinations. That's when they will decide if they will use them for domestic or few okay. slaves. Most of the slaves end up as a few stay. Only few ended up at the master's house. But those slaves, the male slaves that were working at the master's as well, most of the male slaves were castrated so to prevent them from um, having sex with their master's wife or their daughters. 
if that is it. But the government removed the act, the part, act of departure that used to be here and built this. Then, once the slave crossed through the act, they don't come back. It's bye bye to Africa. But now the government built this to show as a sign that we are no longer slaves. So then, if we're going in, not coming back. But now, we are going in, we'll be coming out from there. So that's the idea. But the building is still under construction. We are not yet to it. So we'll only be, at, we'll be able to access it on the building to come through. That is about the point of view. Okay, so we are back from the point of no return, of which we return from, because well, slavery has ended, so to say. <laughs> so, if you, as you can see from all what we heard and seen so far, there were days of when things were really dark, like really dark. I really can't explain. I've been feeling really bad since I saw some of the things. So yes, this is our own way of showing you what happened, what used to happen in those days, and telling you that those days are gone and things are past. Just like he said about the building the government is trying to put up, slavery has gone. So point of no return is not point of no return again. I got there and I'm going back home now. So <laughs> take.